We continue now at the top of Daf Ayin Aleph from Edbeis and Masechas Baba Kama. This is Baba Kama Daf Seventy One B. And the previous summer, the Gemara brought a brisa with a machlokas between Rabbi Meir and the Chachamim. And the Gemara explained that the machlokas between Rabbi Meir and the Chachamim is by shechita she'ena ruuya. Let's say a person does a shechita on an animal that he stole, but it's not ruuya. It's not going. You're not going to be able to eat from that animal based on that shechita. So the Chachamim say that you're part from Dalit Vehei because shechita she'ena ruuya is not considered shechita. That follows the sheet of Rabbi Shimon again. That shechita she'ena ruuya is not a shechita. But Rabbi Meir said in the brisa that the person is chayiv Dalit Vehei, even though it's a shechita she'ena ruuya still. That kind of a shechita is considered a shechita. It can be mechay of a person, dalad vehe. Now, one of the cases in that b'risa was that the shechita that was done, it was specifically done on Shabbos. And the Gemara said, if there was a shechita that was done on Shabbos, so it, why is that a shechita she'en ruuya? And the Gemara said, we're following Rabbi Yochanan HaSadler, that if a, there's a violation of Shabbos in the preparation of the food, it is usher to eat from that food. That's why it's a shechita she'en ruuya. Again, we're following Rabbi Yochanan HaSadler. But the Gemara said, if that is the case, there, there's a machlokis, when we talk about shechita she'en ruuya not being a shechita, there's a machlokis whether that's a din mido raisa. The question is whether Maisa Shabbos is usher on a do raisa level, or is that only der Abonan? And if you're going to say that Maisa Shabbos is usher on a do raisa level, so then the Gemara says it makes sense. Lahachi patri Rabbonin. Then it makes sense to say that the Rabbonin would say Pater from Dalit Vehei in this case. The person shechted on Shabbos. That's considered a shechita shein rui on a do raisa level, and that's why there's no Dalit Vehei. As Rashi says, Lahachi patri Rabbonin. The shechita shein rui he chidav Rabbi Shimon. It's a shechita shein rui like Rabbi Shimon. Elo leman damar der Rabbonin. But according to the one who says that that the Maisa Shabbos is only usher mid Rabbonin. Am I patri Rabbonin? Why would the Rabbonin say Pater in this case? Pater from Dalit Vehei. It doesn't make any sense. It's only a shechita shein rui on a der Rabbonin level, not on a do raisa level. And the Gemara answers to that Ashara. The Gemara says when the Rabbonin say Pater, according to that Manda Amr that Maisa Shabbos is only the Rabbonin, they were only saying Pater in the other cases in the Brisa. They actually weren't saying Pater in the case of Shabbos because if it was done on Shabbos, it would not be a problem of Shchid Hashem Ruya on a Do Raisa level, as we just said. And they're going on the other cases, Avodah Zara Vishor HaNiskal on the case where the Avodah Zara, the short, the animal that was Shechted was a, an animal for Avodah Zara, or it was Shor HaNiskal. So in those situations, it's usher to get any benefit from that Shchita. That is Shchid Hashem Ruya, and that's why the Rabbanon say Pater from Dalid Vehei. But the Gemara continues, Rabbi Meir, but according to Rabbi Meir, am I mechai of shochit l'avodah zara? Why does he say the person is chai of dalit vehei when the animal is shechted for avodah zara? Kevon de shochat papur, so the moment it's shechted a little, ostra, so the animal is now prohibited, you can't get any benefit from the animal. And iduch in the rest of the shechita, which is supposed to be mechai of dalit vehei, by that point in time, he's suri hano, it's already ostra bahano, velo demari katavach, so he's not even shechting the animal that belongs to the owner. In order to be chai of dalit vehei, you have to shech the owner's animal, now it's already ostra bahano. No. And the Gemara answers to that. Oh, my Rava Rava says, Be Omer Big Mar Zvicha who Ovda. What the person says is, is that I'm only serving the Avodah Zara at the conclusion of the slaughtering, at the conclusion of the Shechita, and therefore it's all happening essentially at the same time. The Chi of Dalid Vehei is happening at the end. It's happening right when the service of Avodah Zara happens. And so therefore, again, it's a machlokas between Rabbi Meir and the Rabbonin. Do we say Chayav or Pater? Because the question is whether Shechita She'en Ruya is considered Shechita or not. And the Gemara continues, Shor Haniskol Isure Han. The Gemara answers, asks a similar question. A shore that's supposed to be stoned is Asr Bahana. So if you're shechting that shore, so it doesn't really belong to the original owner, why is there Dalit Vehei in that case at all? And the Gemara answers, Amar Rava Rava says, Hachab my asking on here, what is the case? Kegon Shemasr the Shomer, the case is that the person gave the shore to a Shomer. The Hizik Bevesa Shomer, and while it was in the possession of the Shomer, that's when the animal damaged. Vahu Bevesa Shomer, it was forewarned in the house of the Shomer. Venig Mardino Bevesa Shomer, and that's when there was a Gemara Din, there was a verdict that it has to be stoned in the house of the Shomer. And now the Gemara explains, Rabbi Meir Savar like Rabbi Yaakov. Rabbi Meir holds like Rabbi Yaakov, the Savar like Rabbi Shimon, and he also holds like Rabbi Shimon, as the Gemara now explains. Savar luck Rabbi Yaakov, number one, he holds like Rabbi Yaakov, the Yomar, because Rabbi Yaakov says, Af dino hechziro, shomer Even after the animal has a Gemar Din, let's say there's a Gemar Din on the animal that it's Chayef Skila, but now the Shomer needs to return it to the original owner. But this this animal, you can't get any benefit from, but nevertheless, even after the Gemar Din, even though it's an, an animal you can't get any benefit from, if the Shomer returns the animal whole to the original owner, he has done what he needs to do, it's considered returned, and the Shomer is not responsible. 
possible. That's what Rabbi Yaakov holds. The Savar like Rabbi Shimon, and then he also holds like Rabbi Shimon, meaning to say Rabbi Meir also holds like Rabbi Shimon, that says, Rabbi Shimon says that if something causes someone to have to pay money, so then it's like it's actually worth that money. And where do we see that Rabbi Shimon says that? The Tanan, as we learned in the Mishnah. Rabbi Shimon, Omer, Rabbi Shimon says, Let's say you have an animal that's a carbon, but you're Chayyab Achrayusan. If something happens to that animal, the person is going to have to the person is going to have to replace it. So in that case, Chayiv, Rabbi Shimon says Chayiv, because Dover Hagorim Lamamon Kimamon Dami, as Rashi says. Kodshim Shachai Bachrusan, Ganav Shagonav Kodshimi Bais Bailam. Let's say there's a Ganav, he steals an animal that's a carbon from the house of the original owner. Im Kiblim Bailav Olav Bachrayas, if that owner said that he's taking responsibility, if something happens to the animal, he's going to separate another animal. Kagon Dammer Hare Olai Olav Hifresh Zu, he said, I'm going to bring an Ola, it was like a Neder, and if that animal gets lost, he has to bring a different animal. So then the Ganav is Chayav L'Shalem Kefel. The Ganav has to pay Kefel. The Avagav de Lavdi Deu, even though what he stole really didn't belong to that owner, Ela de Hekta should really belong to Hekta. Why does he have to pay Kefel? But Kevon de Gorim Lamamanu, but in a certain sense, it does belong to that owner because by taking it from the owner, by stealing it from the owner, the owner now has is obligated to get another animal. It's going to cause him to lose money. The Misbiado Boish L'Shlume Kedidei Dami, if it dies in his hand, so he's going to have to pay for it. So it is like it, it's considered his, and there's Kefel. That's the idea of Dover Hagorim Lamam and Kamam and Dami. Since it could obligate the owner to have to owe money, it's considered like that money. And the same thing is true over here. We're talking over here by the Shomer. When this person goes ahead and steals the animal and then he shechs the animal, now the Shomer can't return it to the original owner anymore because it's no longer intact. The animal is not intact. That's Dover Hagorim Lamam and Kamam and Dami. And therefore, it is considered to have value in this situation. And that's why he's going to be Chayev to pay the Dalit Vehei. And again, that's what the Gemara means when it says, Al Modavar Hagorim Lamam and Kamam and Dami. We see from Rabbi Shimon that if it causes a loss of money to someone, that's considered like that amount of money. And the Gemara continues, Amar of Kahana, Rav Kahana says, Amrisa Lashmaita Kami de Rev Zavid Mi Nahardoy. I said over this teaching in front of Rev Zavid from Nahardoy, and I asked as follows, Mi Motsis Mukmis Masnisin Krabi Meir Velo Krabi Shimon. Can you possibly say that our Mishnah follows Rabbi Meir, not Rabbi Shimon? Valkatani Seva, but what about that which is taught at the end of the Mishnah? Rabbi Shimon Potter Bishne Elu. It says Rabbi Shimon says Potter in these two cases, Mechlal de Vakula Masnisin Moda. That implies that the whole rest of the Mishnah, Rabbi Shimon agrees with, and that part of the Mishnah is Rabbi Shimon. And the Gemara says, Amar he said back to him, Lo, no, Mechlal de Moda Betavachumachar Lurafu Vilaklavim. It just implies that Rabbi Shimon admits in the the following two cases, if somebody slaughters or sells for refuah purposes or for, for giving it to dogs, that's what Rabbi Shimon is going to admit, but he's not going to admit for the entire rest of the Mishnah. The rest of the Mishnah actually is like Rabbi Meir. And Rashi explains, Mimotzis Mukmis Lamasnisin, meaning the Gona Vitavach Bioma Kippurim. This was on the previous summit. The Gemara said on the previous summit that in the case of the Mishnah where one stole and slaughtered on Yom Kippur, the Gemara said it's Krevi Meir Lechudei, that it follows only Rabbi Meir. The Amar Loku Mishalim, because Rabbi Meir is the one who says Loku Mishalim, even though you're getting Malkus, it's possible to have to pay the Dalit Vehei. That's what the Gemara said in the previous summit. So that's saying that it's like Rabbi Meir and not Rabbi Shimon. Vahamidiktari, but again, from the Safe, it sounds like the whole Mishnah is Rabbi Shimon, except that Rabbi Shimon disagrees, poter bishneyelu, except in two cases. And the Gemara says, no, it means l'refuah v'leklavim. It means to say, in the case of refuah and klavim, those t- those two cases specifically, Rabbi Shimon is moder. Rabbi Shimon paters in these two, but not l- by refuah and klavim, meaning v'itzrech l'ashmin, and the point is that Rabbi Shimon is teaching as follows. Avagavdal Rabbi Shimon shechita she'en ru'u yelo shma shechita. Even though Rabbi Shimon says that a shechita that you can't benefit from, you can't eat from, is not a shechita, and in all of those kinds of cases, by shechita she'en ru'u Uyas. Rabbi Shimon says Potter, that's Bishne Elu. He says Potter by Shrita Shein Ruya. But Hach Shrita Ruya Kachashavla. The point is that he would admit, Rabbi Shimon would admit if you sell, if you slaughter or sell for Rafur or Klavim. So when you slaughter for Rafur, when you slaughter for, for Klavim, that is a Shrita Ruya. You're not, you're not planning on benefiting from the Shrita. You're not planning on eating from the Shrita, but it's still considered a Shrita Ruya. And so therefore, that's what it meant at the end of the Mishnah that Rabbi Shimon Potter Bishne Elu, but he would admit, he would agree by the case of Rafur and Klavim. But in the case of the mission of Yom Kippur, there Rabbi Shimon would argue because Rabbi Shimon would hold that you're not able to get Malchus and also pay. Unlike Rabbi Meir, that part of the mission is Rabbi Meir and not Rabbi Shimon. 
And the Gemara continues that the two dads, Ganav Mishal Avi Vitavachu Machar Vichulu, it said if he stole from his father and then he slaughtered and he sold and then his father died, so he's going to owe the Arba Vichamisha to the heirs of his father, the other heirs of his father. And the Gemara says, Boy Mine Rava Meir of Nachman. Rava asked Rav Nachman the following question. Ganav Shur Shel Shnei Shutfin. Let's say a person st- steals an axe that belongs to two partners. Vitavachu, and he slaughters the axe. And then he admits to one of the two partners. So there he's only going to pay the Arab of the Chamisha to one of the two partners. He's going to, only going to pay half of it. So Ma'u, so what's the halacha? Chamisha bakar, Amar Achman, Avalo Chamisha Chatzoi bakar. The Torah says you have to pay five bakar, not five half bakar. So maybe there's no din of Arab of the Chamisha over here. O Dilmar, maybe Chamisha bakar, Amar Achman, Avafilo Chamisha Chatzoi bakar. The Torah says five bakar, but it would mean even five Chatzoi bakar, and there would be a payment of Chamisha in this case. Amar Lay, so he said back to him, this is Rav Nachman responding to Rav, Chamisha Bakr, Amar Achmona, Velo Chamisha Chatzoi Bakr. It says in the Pasuk, five Bakr, not five half Bakr, and therefore in this case of the Shnei Shutfin, there would be no obligation of Chamisha, and similarly by Asad, there'd be no obligation of paying four times the amount, no Arba Chamisha. And the Gemara continues, Eisve, we had the following question from our Mishnah. Ganav Misha Lavav, it says, if he steals from his father, Vitavachumachar, then he slaughters and he sells it, Viachagach Mesavav, and then his father dies, Meshalam Tashlum Yarbava Chamisha, he has to pay the four and five times the amount because his father was still alive when he sold it, when he slaughtered it or sold it. Therefore, he was high four or five times the amount, then the father dies, he has to pay whatever it is to the rest of the heirs. And the Gemara says, Vahachabad over here, Kevon de Mesavav, Kemosha Kadam Vahoda Leachad Mehan Dami. When his father dies, that's the equivalent. Equivalent of, equivalent of admitting to one of the parties because the moment his father dies, he's certainly at least admitting to himself he is one of the heirs of his father. And what are we saying over here? That he does pay the four or five times the amount, meaning again, he, he, he slaughtered and sold it. So in the case where he slaughtered it, let's say, He's chayiv the arba v'chamisha. Then his father dies, but he's essentially admitting it at that point in time, and therefore he's not going to be chayiv to himself. And it's exactly like the case of the partnership. And so, therefore, it sounds like you do pay the rest of the heirs. And the Gemara says Amar Le. So he said back to him, "It's not a proof from our Mishnah." Hachem ayaskin, because here in our Mishnah, what's the case? Very simple. Kagon sha'amad av bedin. It's not just that he slaughtered it or he sold it while his father was alive, but then he actually went to court, and therefore in the court they were mechayiv him the four or five times the amount, and so therefore. Of course, at that point in time, once they were of him, if the father dies, so then he owes the heirs. And the Gemara says, well, if, if that's the case, but then what are you saying? If there was no court case, what are you saying is the halacha? Then you're saying, then you're saying that he doesn't have to pay the four or five times the amount, because since he didn't go to court, so now he's still able to admit, and when the father dies, it's like he's admitting to himself, and that would get rid of but if that's the case, if so, instead of saying at the end of the Mishnah, the Mishnah is going to go on to the context contrasting case. And what's the contrasting case? That case is, Gana Mishal Aviv, if he steals from his father, Vamesa, and his father dies before he slaughters or sells it. And then he goes ahead and slaughters and sells the animal. It said over there, So there, he doesn't pay the four or five times the amount, because over there already, his father had already died before he slaughtered or sold it. There is no Arbav Chamisha. But why give that as the case? You could actually have made a distinction even in the case where the father doesn't, doesn't die for First, in the following way, say very simply, what is the? When are we saying that there's going to be arba v'chamisha? That's if they had a court case. But if there was no court case, then you don't pay the four or five times the amount again because it's as if he admitted to himself. Why not give that contrasting case? Why are you giving this other case where the father dies first before the tzvich and the mechira? And the Gemara says, he said back to him, indeed that could have been the contrasting case, but I did not of Reisha since in the first part of the Mishnah, the case was he stole from the father, slaughtered and sold, and then the father died, and then the father died, so we want to give a kind of parallel contrasting case. Nazif Seifanami, so therefore at the end of the mission as well, we phrase it as follows, Ganav Mishal Aviv, if he steals from his father, Vamesa Aviv, and his father dies before the Tvich and the Mechira, V'yachakach Tavachu Machar, and then he slaughters and sells it, we want to give that case, but Eino Chinami, we could have given the other case as well. However, the Gemara then says, let Safra, but in the morning, after he thought about this question of whether it's possible to have Chamisha Chatzoi Bakar, so then Amar Leisa, then he said to him, Chamisha Bakar, Amar Achmona 
Ilu Chamisha Chatzai Bakar. Actually, it's not true. When it comes to five Bakar, it says in the Pasuk five Bakar, but it would be true even f- by five half Bakar. And therefore, in the situation of the Shutfin, actually, you would have to pay, even if he admitted to one of the Shutfin, he would have to pay the Chamisha Chatzai Bakar. And the Gemara continues, Vahaydalo Amri Lach Borsa. Now, why didn't I give you that answer in the evening? And we will continue with this discussion in the next video on Daf Ayin Bey's Ahmed Aleph.